Hi, this is Margaret from dataminingdna.com and this is a walkthrough video on how to share your family tree. So we go to sharing your tree with other Ancestry users and then we look at whether you can give access to non-members or whether they need to pay for membership. So I'm on the home page here in Ancestry. I'm going to pull up a tree. So in your tree here you have two share buttons with slightly different icons but they've got both arrived at the same dialog page. Up here in the top right we have the share button and then in the drop down menu of every tree you have this sharing link they both lead to the exact same dialog box so i'll just click here on sharing so this is the invitation dialog box for the tree you have three ways to send an invite the email option here if you click on it you provide ancestry with the email of the person you want to send an invite you then choose the role. We'll come to this later, but the role is guest, contributor, and editor. I'll come to the differences between these three settings. You can put in a personal message. So the personal message appears at the top of the invite, and then the rest of it is bump that Ancestry puts in, and Ancestry will include a link to get at this family tree. So by clicking send invite, you are asking the Ancestry messaging system to send an email to the email address you've entered here to your target person. Now, the fact that you're using the Ancestry messaging system can be an issue, particularly if the target user isn't used to receiving emails from Ancestry. It could well go into their spam folder or their promotions folder. It's best to warn the person if you're sending them an email via the Ancestry messaging system to keep an eye out for it. The the second option here is one that I rarely use. In this case, if you cl just click on the username here, you're inviting an Ancestry user by their Ancestry username. And again, you set the role to guest, contributor, or editor. And when you send an invite, once again, the message goes through the Ancestry messaging system and is sent to the email that is associated with that Ancestry username. Sometimes it's quite hard to find out what the username is of your Ancestry DNA match or an Ancestry tree owner. And that's because there are two names that we have as Ancestry members. We have the username that we sign up with, and then we have the display name. And the display name is what gets shown to our matches. And therefore, you may know the display name of your DNA match, but you may not know their username. And part of the problem as well is when you're you know, messaging with somebody and you ask them, what is your username? Sometimes a less experienced Ancestry user will tell you that display name and they're not entirely sure what their username is. So I st stick away from the usernames just unless I know for sure what it is. So you have this third option, which is the shareable link. And notice how it says that this is new. I'm doing this video in late July 2020. And I'm going to pull up a blog post from Ancestry announcing this shareable link. See it here? Shareable link new. <laughs> this blog post was in, there we go, the 8th of October 2018. That's not too far away from being two years ago. So <laughs> I'm not sure if it's still in beta. When I was testing it out for this video, it actually, I use it a couple of times just to make sure it was working and it does work but i also got a pop-up survey to give my feelings on whether i like the feature or not so maybe they're not still not sure about it certainly when it first came out there were a few glitches as you scroll down to the many many comments there's a number of people who are point, pointing out that it wasn't quite working but it's certainly working um fine now and it's not really new okay so, but it is my preferred option. And the reason why it's my preferred option is, how does it work? You click on shareable link. And once again, you choose guest, contributor, or editor. Here, notice that you're given the option that by default is turned off, that the person can see living people. And you're thinking, well, I didn't actually see that option on the other two email or username kind of options well by default with the email and username when the invite is sent they cannot see living people and what you have to do is you have to go into the sharing admin page and apply 
this permission separately. I'll show that a little bit later, but here it's kind of an all in one. You can set it here and set it or set it off. Now, if they're an editor, if they're an editor, all editors can see living people. You can't turn it off, but you can choose for your guests and your contributors. Okay, so once you've chosen what you want in terms of the settings and you hit cre create link here, Ancestry generates a unique link that does bring the invitee to your tree, but it is unique for each user. So if you create the link, and I'm just going to click create, I'm going to just copy that link, and I'm just going to show you what it is in Notepad. Bring Notepad here, and I'm just going to control V paste. What we can see here is this really long string is a unique key that's generated every time. What that means is that once it's used, it can't be used by another person. What Ancestry are doing here is they're ensuring that the person you send this to, the recipient, doesn't both use it and ex accept your invite and then forward it on to a hundred other people in their, you know, their email list. So it's, it's basically use once and it dies. <laughs> That's right. So it's still saying this feature is in testing. Tell us what you think. It's been in testing for quite a long time, and I will say it's it's my preferred method. The reason why I prefer it is that you don't use the ancestry messaging system. Well, you can if you want. I mean, you can pull up a message, or you can create a new message in the messaging center, or whatever it's being called now. It is changing, and you can send a message via the ancestry messaging system, and include this link in it. Although it won't be clickable. What I use it for is to use my own personal email to send an email to my target recipient and I include the clickable link. And there, therefore, usually I am in an email relationship with the recipient. Therefore, usually the message isn't going to go into their spam or be rejected in, in some kind of way. And you don't have to use email. You can use it. You can embed that link in any messaging system that you want. You can send it by Facebook private message. You could send it by, is it, what do Twitter call it? Is it a DM? You can send it by Instagram, whatever messaging system you prefer. Therefore, it just gives you more control. And in my case, or in my opinion, more confidence that the other person is going to receive it. So I just want to address next, what is the difference between guest, contributor, and editor? And apologies if this is a little blurry. This is a screenshot of one of Ancestry's support documents. So in a nutshell, a guest can view your tree, uh, read only, and they can leave comments. Now, with a public tree, any Ancestry member can leave a comment on a public tree. If your tree is private, you're allowing a guest to leave a comment on your private tree. That's all they can do. And by default, they cannot see living people. The contributor gets the extra permission of being able to upload stories and photos to your tree. And then it's only the editor who can add and edit person profiles in your tree. Now, just note that for an editor, they are always able to see living people. And you need to have a think about that if there are minors in, a, in your tree. Okay, so suppose you've sent your invite and you've changed your mind. Or suppose you've made somebody an editor and they have interesting photos and now you want to bump them up in terms of their role to be contributor. You need to go to the sharing administration page. Now, I'm going to, going to go to a different tree where I've actually have invited people. Okay, so for this particular tree, I want to go to the sharing's admin page. Now, that's for on, it's a tab on the tree settings page. So to get to the tree settings, it's an item in the menu drop down under the tree name. So click on tree settings, which brings you to tree settings page you're on the first tab which is tree info this is not the tab that you want you want this third tab over here the sharing tab click on the sharing tab and here we see that i've actually what i've done here i was testing it out i sent a few links just to make sure uh that they arrived at the right email address but i haven't accepted them so but notice that at this point i may have changed my mind um, in terms of the role that I'm conferring. So here is where I can go. If, the, if somebody had accepted it, I would see their name here. I can bump up them, bump up their status from guest to contributor to editor. I can turn on can see living people. I can also trash 
this. So if I sent the invite link and thought, oh, okay, actually, I didn't really want to do that, or I no longer want this person to see it, just click remove. You get this, are you sure dialog box and click OK. Uh, voila. It's one of the two is gone. So the next question that gets asked is, can you share a tree with someone who isn't an Ancestry member? And if they're not an Ancestry member, do they have to have a paid subscription? Now I'm just going to bring up the companion blog post for this particular video, which has a bit more detail on all the topics. So I'll, there's a link in the description below if you want to go take a look at it. This is a, our blog post on the same topic. And here is where I address, can you share a tree with someone without a subscription? Okay, so there's a few more details in the blog page. And we've also linked to a guide that we're running, a series of in-depth articles on using Ancestry, where we go into a lot of detail about different aspects of Ancestry.